Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about registration form of Free Code Camp, the path of responsive web design. So basically this will be the output of our project, all right? So after the solution of this video, we're going to have a, a page like this, okay? So let's start. So basically in this video, we're going to learn how to work with CSS, HTML, and we're going to start styling this registration form using input and all of those things here, the radio, the checkbox, how to upload the file, all right, and those things, okay? So let's start. So basically in this video, we're going to build uh, this project, okay? And it's pretty important that you already saw the previous projects or you already did the previous projects because here we're going to reuse much uh, about the things that the knowledge we, we conquer in the previous projects, okay? So let's start. Basically, like I always mentioned, when we are starting an HTML file, we need here to write the doc type. So we need to tell our browser here, Mozilla, Google Chrome, whatever, what you're using we need to tell what is the document we're gonna write so here we're saying that it's an html file then we need to open it up an html tag and we can say what is the language of this html and here it's english okay and all the tags we're gonna write inside of this html okay and every time we have an html tag we have the head and the body the head is everything that we cannot see okay so when we have some links with the html with the css for example and the body is everything we can see all right so we're gonna start working with this now here we're gonna add the title this title here it's important to remember that is the title of the tab okay so in this case it won't appear because we don't have a tab for this project but it's the title of the tab okay and we need this meta char set equals to utf8 okay this is something that they kind of ask us to have some standards then we're gonna link with our ch styles.css so here we're gonna do a link rel relationship equals to style sheet and the href we're gonna say what is the name of the file that we're gonna write the css content and here is the styles.css great now in here in the body we're gonna add a heading okay and one thing that is important is i'm mentioning this in all projects we're working with we have six types of heading okay and i want to show you all of the six types and what is the big difference between all of the types of the heading basically for each heading we have a different importance on the page so if you want to work with a heading that it's too important you're going to use h1 and as we can see it, the, the font size here it's larger than the other one for example the h6 that is the smaller so this means that it's not that important in the page okay so here we're going to have a registration form we're going to write it down this in here great then now we're going to have this below the heading we're going to use a paragraph to display this message so besides the heading we can also work with paragraphs and to work with paragraphs we just need the p tag okay and now we can see this paragraph in here so far so good now we're gonna work with this styles.css so now we're gonna use the tag body and we're gonna use it here with we want to set 100 percent and the height we're gonna set 100 vh and basically vh is telling we want to use 100 percent of the height we have available in our screen okay the vh is just another unit that you can use for this besides we're gonna get rid of the horizontal scroll bar so we don't want this horizontal scroll bar in here so we're gonna set the margin zero margin zero okay and now we don't have any more the scroll bar great and we don't have any more the scroll bar in here as well now we're gonna set the color of the background here we're gonna use this that. if you don't remember what it's a color with hex here a hexadecimal color we learned in the previous project the css color markers okay so we're kind of giving some color in here and the background color will be the background color of the page and the color will be the color of the text so we're here we're gonna use this type of color in here okay now we can read the text Great. next step we're gonna create a form so if you don't remember about forms we mentioned about is on the 
first project. But basically a form is anything that the user can type in and we can get some data from the user. And to get this data, we need to tell the action, we'll tell where we're gonna send the data that we're getting from the user. So here we're gonna put an URL, for example. I wanna send the data to this register demo, blah, 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 okay? So we have here the action. Right now it's not showing anything, but now we're gonna have three field sets because we wanna separate our page, our form in three parts. Remember that we have the part of the type input, the box we're gonna type in. We have the checkbox, we have the radio. So we're gonna start adding this field set in here. Field set. So the field set will create this box and we're gonna have three. So we're gonna have three boxes in here inside. Okay. Now we're gonna add four, we're gonna start adding four labels in the first field set. So basically the label, it's kind of, it's actually a label for what we're gonna ask for. Okay, so here we're gonna add a label. And if I put in here, hi, for example, it will be just a message, a regular, like a paragraph, okay? But in this case, label, it's more used for inputs when we're working with forms. So we're gonna have four labels with, uh, and they're gonna have the name, the first field name, it's gonna have, start the four, adding four label elements for the first blah, blah, blah. So we're gonna hold name, pa email, and password. Let's see if we have to add. We're gonna do this later. Now, what are we gonna do? We're gonna enter these messages in the label. We're gonna say, enter first email, like we can see in here, first name, enter last name. So the label, it's really good to tell the user what is going to write and create a new password. Okay, perfect. So now we have these four labels. Later on, we're gonna style putting everything in a column instead of a row. Actually, we're gonna do this right now. Okay, here, label, we're gonna use a tag label. We're gonna use display block because right now they are all in the same, they were all in the same row. Now they are in, in a row, in, in a column, display in a column. And we're gonna give a margin. Here we can use 0.5 REM and zero to separate them from each other. REM is just like another unit like pixels that we were using before. So it's just a new unit that we're learning right now. Okay. Now we're going to have a input. Uh, for every label, we're going to have an input. Okay. And we're not going to give any type so far. So we're going to have just this box in here. We need a space after the call. Okay. I think this is what they want us. Oh, it should be inside the label. Interesting. So we're going to remove and we're going to put in here. We're gonna Gonna put the box inside the label okay we're gonna put in here right perfect they are all in the same row okay let's go to the next one now we're gonna give some types so for the text view for the first name and the last name it will be a type text okay so type equals to text so we're gonna do this for this other the next one basically every input has a type we can have a type email and let's see what is type email basically the type email will expect to have an at and a dot if we don't type in an at and a dot it won't understand and the password the type password will hide whatever you write in there so password and if we try it out here if i type in things we don't see what it we're typing okay this is the type password really good now let's go to the next one so now we're gonna have we need the last field elements to have an input so we're gonna have an input type submit okay let me see after we're gonna put after the field set so here we're gonna have an input the type submit will create a button okay so like we can see in here we're creating this submit button and we want to display the message submit so so far we have to give the value submit the value here we can say add for example and it will change the text of the button but here we want submit okay this is what we need so far now we're gonna add, give the required attribute for the L input elements in the first field set so the required will tell that we must add messages we must fill in here these inputs otherwise they won't work okay so the required will allow so for example if i click here and submit it will give me a warning message saying please fill in this field so it won't allow us submit if it's empty okay now the type email we can give a mean length of eight so we can tell that we want at least eight elements in here actually in the uh in the password we can say here mean length equals to eight and this will tell that we need at least eight things eight passwords in eight characters in here otherwise we won't allow for example if i put here two i will put like uh add just to check here i put just only two passwords it will tell us please length uh the text eight characters so basically here they're telling us to have at least eight this is pretty nice okay then we have we can add a pattern so this 
pattern here it's a little bit more complicated okay this talks about regular expressions if you want to learn more about regular expressions take a look here at the card all right where we have uh some videos that explain how to work with regular expressions using one extra course that has named cs50 uh made by harvard so it's really good if you want to learn more about regular expression okay but basically here we're gonna have a pattern attribute and we're gonna say that the password must contain letters from a to z in lowercase must contain numbers from zero to five and it has it needs to contain at least eight of these repetitions okay so here we're gonna remove this and we're gonna say pattern equals to a to z zero to five and at least eight repetitions okay and let's check so here is the same thing as the minimum length eight okay but just we're just telling that we must have characters and numbers in here now we're going to the next part of the registration form where we're going to ask the user uh if the user read the terms and conditions so here we're gonna have a label we're gonna have three labels actually so one two and three great it's not showing anything and now we're gonna have the the choice of selecting the if it's personal or account or business so here we're gonna have an input type equals to radio okay and if you don't remember the radio is this sign here and here we're gonna have another one and the good thing is we're gonna put here the personal account so this will be the label personal account and the other label will be business account okay perfect so now we have it now we're gonna create a checkbox so the checkbox it's gonna tell if the user uh read or not the condition so here type equals to checkbox and we're gonna say that is required okay then we're gonna set the text for all of those now we're gonna put the message i put before but now we're gonna say this personal account business account and i accept the terms and conditions okay and here the radio only accept one or the other in this case you're expect accepting both and the checkbox only you can click and remove okay so you should give the first label text one space in front so i think we need this extra space probably in here the same great now we're gonna give a name for the radio account type so name is important to tell whenever whenever we're sending the data to our backend so whenever we're sending the data when we are in our form we need to give some names for each type of data we're sending so in this case I'm giving the name account type. So this means that whatever the user select in here, it's about the account type. So the account type can be either personal or business. And we're doing this when we add this class, this name in here. Okay, great. So now that we added this name, the user can select one or the other only. And here to finish, we're going to link the terms of condition to this link in here. So we're going to have a tag that we're going to link this text in here. So href, so the user can read the terms before before he accepts the terms okay like we can see in here all right uh there's only a wrap around the term so i'm gonna remove this the a tag should be only for the terms and conditions so here i accept the terms and conditions now as this hyperlink great so now in here we're gonna create this input we're gonna create a one label for upload a profile picture and now we're gonna have that button that we saw previously for uploading a new profile okay here the input will be type file good to know so here we're gonna have a type input input type equals to file okay so the user can choose here a file great now we're gonna set here uh we want to add another label for uh after the first to input the age so here we're gonna have a label input your age years okay and we're gonna have a input your type equals to number and we're gonna give a minimum of 13 and a maximum of 120 okay and then i have to close the label tag so we're checking if the user has the correct uh let me see here perfect i'm just after the first input i'm just not sure yes in here this is the place then we're gonna have a select option okay so this select option will be a drop down this is pretty nice so we're gonna basically create here we're gonna create a select okay and it already make this uh drop down and we're gonna have an option inside 
So the option, we can kind of say, what is the option? For example, we're gonna have th five options inside of this select. So if I put in here, like one, I'm gonna show you. I can have here one, two, if I put here one, two, three, four, and five. Here, if I take a look, now the dropdown has all these selections, all these options, okay? So this is nice about the option. We can set here what are the options we wanna have. So if we check, perfect. Now, what are the options we want? Before the select, we wanna have the label here. So we're, we wanna have a label saying here, uh, how did you hear about us? We want to have, we want to have this label and I'm gonna close here after the select label. Okay, let's see. Great. Now we're gonna give the options. So we're gonna have these options here in our options. So select one, free code camp news, free code camp YouTube channel, free code camp forum, and other, other. And like we can see in here, if we click, now we have all these options in our dropdown. Okay, this is great. Now, let's see here. We can give the first option of value of empty and the subsequent values of one to four. So here the value, it's important to tell our backend, all right, what to, when we're sending the data, what was the option that the user selected, okay? And we're gonna do this. So we're gonna add some values from one to four for the options that are available. And for the first option, since it's just a placeholder, we will let this empty, okay? This part is more for our, when we're sending the data. So option one here, oh, I didn't put the equals. Equals, 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 great. Perfect. Now for, we're gonna use a text area. So text area, it's pretty similar to this, but a text area, we can have more rows and more columns. So we're gonna add a label with the text provide at the end of the field set, so here, we're going to have a label where we're going to add the element. We're going to say provide a bio. Great. And here we're going to have the text area, text area, and then we close the label. Okay. This 